Welcome to another installment of 30 Minute Thursdays. Your host for tonight will be Diane Gilbert, Muller's Technology and Learning Coach. Social media and you. This is our topic for today, and it's pretty far reaching because we're going to talk about social media, certainly, but we're also going to be talking about how best to keep your students safe, how to keep the Chromebook safe, and what the ramifications there are, and all of the different pieces that Richland 2 and Muller Road have in place to make all things interact and work together so that your student has a working device and is able to safely do his or her work. This particular video is one that the guidance counselors and I filmed together, and it was designed to make sure that your student would understand the whole notion of the digital footprint, and I'm going to go ahead and play that now. Good morning, this is Ms. Gilbert talking to you today a little bit about social media and you. And this is a pretty hot topic because it's something that we experience on a regular basis, whether we're looking at Facebook or Flickr or Twitter or uh, Instagram or Pinterest or a number of others. And we do this on a regular basis. And what we do when we go on social media is we like things that we like. Sometimes we don't like those things. But particularly today, we're going to talk about things that we like. And here's the thing, likes on social media do impact you because it shows that you agree. So if you like something on social media, it shows that you are agreeing with what that media is saying or representing. Now that can be great. It can be something that that's just innocuous. If it's a cute puppy, wonderful. But if it's something that could be offensive to someone else, then there could be a little bit of a problem. Pictures you post on social media, like your profile picture, they reflect you. And what you post can offend others in that regard as well. So people can be fired as adults for some things that they post on social media. They can be not hired because of it. And students can receive sometimes punishment or something like that. So it's just something that you just need to be super aware of and your digital footprint lasts and lasts and it can follow you. So it's something that we need to think about. Hi, I'm Mrs. Kolb and I'm one of the school counselors here at Muller Road. As Ms. Gilbert was talking about your digital footprint, this is anything that you search online, post that you like, things that you repost, your profile pictures, all of these things leave a footprint that is specific to you. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that post things online that are insensitive. Once you like a post or retweet it or repost it, it does become part of your digital footprint. Later, this digital footprint can be retrieved by colleges when you're trying to apply for a certain college or even your future employers. You need to make sure you think about the things that you are liking and linking yourself to. Hey guys, this is Mr. Patterson, one of the school counselors here at Muller Road. As Ms. Gibbert and Mrs. Kolb has mentioned, we share some great information with you. Just wanna leave you with some tips about uh, proper use of social media. So here's some tips for you. Be kind. Be mindful of posts that may offend family and friends. Think twice before hitting sin. And consider what you post today. Tomorrow may be too late. So guys, be smart, be kind, and have a good day. On our half day in September, we created a digital awareness bank of lessons to keep students aware of how to navigate social media. We looked at the digital footprint yet again and identity. Students learn to think carefully before posting and sharing information by comparing their digital footprints to things such as a permanent marker, a copy machine, or a jumbotron at a stadium. 
and then teen voices, friendships and social media, relationships and communication. Students hear what other teens have to say about using social media to connect with friends, and they consider the complications and distractions that can happen and think critical, critically about how social media affects their relationships. And then upstanders and allies, taking action against cyberbullying. When cyberbullying happens, everyone involved brings their own perspective to the situation. So this helps students learn about the importance of empathy, how to consider others' feelings, and how to be an upstander when cyberbullying occurs. Now, as a digital parent, you want to be able to monitor your student and make sure your student is being safe. And the first thing we did was we took a look at how, how students can keep their devices up to date and how you can look at the history. But some other things that you might want to think about doing with your student is to check and talk with them on a daily basis about things that they're posting, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all the different pieces. And you might want to go ahead and have their, their usernames and passwords and get alerts sent to you so that you stay in the know and you are aware of what's going on and have conversations with your students about how all, how, how all of this is going, how they're feeling, who they're in contact with. And the other thing too, is that when your student gets home from school, it wouldn't be a bad thing to sit with them with their Chromebook and kind of talk through how they are able to balance the media piece with productivity. Mm -hmm. So how well are they able to get their work done and then also um, enjoy some downtime? And what do they enjoy? Are they into Minecraft? Do they like to go to YouTube videos? Do they watch movies? Do they like to connect with friends via social media? What are the pieces that are really important to them? And the idea too is to know where to look. What we're gonna talk about right now is being able to assist your student in keeping the device clear of any kind of blockage and also for you to understand how you can check on the history that your student has been investigating. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the three dots next to the picture and here you're going to see a palette of different items to look at. The first one I recommend you look at if you want to see where your student has been is look at the history. And you can look at look look over it over time, a little bit of time here, and you can get a general idea of the kinds of sites your student has been on. And then if you are have any concerns about that, you can have that conversation with your student. Now, in terms of keeping your student's device running smoothly, I recommend that if you look here on bookmarks and find that in the bookmark manager, your student has bookmarks. I recommend that you have your student and, and there's any kind of complication at all, that is. I would recommend that your student copy the bookmarks onto a Google Doc and bookmark the Google Doc and delete all of the, the bookmarks there because those things can run in the background and cause blockages when trying to operate in the Google system. And you can easily delete them by just clicking on the three dots and there's a delete right there. Also, your student can go to more tools and clear browsing data. I recommend that it be advanced for all time and all box checked. And then you can click clear data. And that is a great panacea for blockages as well. And then the student can come over here to About Chrome and click on that. And mine is up to date, but if it's not up to date, it'll, it'll say check for updates in blue and your student can uh, click on that and just make sure that the device is absolutely up and running. And the other thing to be aware of is that there's an RUP, 
And that RUP is super helpful in terms of keeping your students safe. And what I would like to do is just show you a little bit about that. So there are three components of the RUP. And one is respect. And the idea is that there are three components there for digital access, digital etiquette, and digital law. So we want to advocate for equal digital rights and access for di di digital citizenship. And then digital etiquette, rules and policies aren't enough. We need to teach everyone about appropriate conduct online. And then digital law, it's critical that users understand to properly use and share each other's digital property. The next piece is to educate. We want digital communication, digital lit literacy, and digital commerce. So in terms of digital communication, with so many communication options available, students need to learn how to choose the right tools according to their audience and message. Digital literacy, this involves more than being able to use tools. Digital literacy is about how to find, evaluate, and cite digital materials. And digital commerce, as students make more purchases online, they must understand how to be effective consumers in a digital economy. And finally, protect. Digital rights and responsibilities, digital safety and security, and digital health and wellness. Students must understand their basic digital rights to privacy and freedom of speech, digital safety and security. Digital citizens need to know how to safeguard their information by controlling privacy settings and digital health and wellness. One important aspect of living in a digital world is knowing when to unplug. Students need to make informed decisions about how to prioritize their time and activities online and off. Balance is one of the five competencies of did, sit, commit. So these are some ideas that we want to let you know that we talk about with your student and that you might use these ideas as springboards for you to have a similar conversation with your student. We did not talk about extensions because the extensions are monitored now by Richland District 2. So your students are not really able to download extensions at school that are not acceptable. And their apps also are somewhat limited. So the idea of where to look would be definitely their social media. I would say maybe have some conversations with them about their email look at their history as we've talked about before, and also talk with their friends if their friends are around and see what's going on there. Are they into Google Meets? Do they um, meet virtually in other platforms such as Zoom? Or do they do Discord? All these different social media pieces. And you can, again, look in the history to see if those are some things that they're doing. And then social media and the law. Here's the thing. When students post items that are inappropriate online, we sometimes have to get our deputy involved or um, sometimes it goes beyond that because postings online can go beyond the school. And that's something to also consider. We want students to say, stay safe and students to be safe with each other. So what is posted is really, really important. So the kinds of pictures that are shared, the kinds of sites that the students try to go onto, and the kinds of conversations that they have, they need to be appropriate. And those are all places where you as the parent can intervene in order to assist your student in being absolutely safe online. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. This is social media and you and all the ramifications that go on in, in between. And I hope you have a great night. And thanks for joining this second posting of 30 Minute Thursday.